Hey folks, The Inflicted here. I am looking at a really interesting paintball gun today. So the T4E HDS is really interesting. I mean, what could be cooler than a double-barreled, sawed-off paintball shotgun? This is my boomstick! Surrender. Now these guns are available in two primary versions. There is a seven and a half joule version and a 16 joule version. And that joule refers to the muzzle energy of this gun when it's fired. This particular one came out of the box as the seven and a half joule or 200 FPS version. And that is actually the one you want, and you'll see why in a little bit. Now, as the seven and a half jewel version, and possibly all of them, this gun does have this little gold pentagon here that hopefully you can see. This is a German F stamp, uh, F for Frei or free to own in Germany. Numerex is a German company, and as a under German firearms laws, since this is under seven and a half jewels, it is not technically considered a firearm under German law and anyone is free to own it without a German firearms license. Consequently, the 16 joule version, 16 joules is the limit in England to have a, uh, an air gun be under the limit as a firearm, and France is 20. There is, as far as I know, no actual legal limit in America for a uh, air gun, so paintball guns really don't apply anyway. So that seven and a half joule limit does present a bit of a problem for this gun. So let's see what seven and a half joules looks like over the chronograph. Okay, so this is fresh out of the box with the flow limiter still in, and we get 219, 234, and with both barrels, 119, so barely lower end of usable that way. So, 228, 211 one barrel. Let's see if I can shoot a bit faster. 226, 184. So you can see with that tiny pinhole, it takes a much longer time for it to recharge between shots. So right out of the box, this gun shoots right around 224 feet per second, which is way under the limit for a paintball gun at most fields. All fields in the United States have a limit under 300 feet per second, and most have a limit right up to it, around 280 or 290 feet per second. So you're already at a big disadvantage of this gun, having you know no sights and only having two shots at a time. But with that velocity limit, your range is going to be very limited as well. So as people have already seen, there is a way to increase the velocity of these guns, and that's by getting into it and removing a certain part. A lot of videos already covered the procedure of taking these things apart. I'm not going to necessarily cover that here, but I will show you what it is that causes that velocity to be so low. Okay, so once you've undone all nine of these tiny little screws holding the two body shelves together, you can carefully pry it apart and reveal the next half of the gun on the inside that also has to be disassembled. Okay, so here we have the working parts of the gun, and by paintball standards, the HDS-68 is a really unorthodox design, and not just because it has two barrels. See, the way this thing works is as a blow forward, like an auto mag, or I could say a Tipman TPX, but it has no regulator. It, run, it runs off of siphoned up liquid CO2. So this thing is just bonkers by paintball standards. Here's the, uh, well, I don't wanna call it a bolt, let's just call it a sear retained plunger which brushes forward when you let go and is return, returned by spring pressure. So it is a blow forward gun. And once it's at the forward part of its stroke, it dumps this air stored in the dump chamber down one or both of these two barrels. There's a little diverter valve here that will switch a little door to set it up to be left, right, or both barrels, depending on how you have this little switch.
Okay, so with the dump chamber here, go ahead and pull the spool off. And when you've unloosened the uh, back of the dump chamber enough, you can remove it. And that gives you access to the uh, flow limiter. So to remove the flow limiter, easiest way is not to get something there to pry it out, but just to actually go ahead and use a screwdriver or something. Put it through the power tube and just push it out. And that gives you access to it. So here is the reason the gun shoots quite slow. This flow limiter here fills up a lot of the space in the back of the dump chamber and restricts the flow into the gun. If you look, it actually seals off the entire area. If you look, it actually seals off air from getting from the bottom of the dump chamber here into the main one. And if you look at the flow limiter, there's just the tiniest little pinhole there in the end of it that allows the CO2 to go ahead and collect into the uh, back of the dump chamber to let the thing fire. So what a lot of people do is just leave out the flow limiter altogether, reassemble the gun with this dump chamber fully open, and we'll see what that does over the chronograph. Okay, so this is with the flow restrictor completely removed. Fresh cartridge. Got us charged. loaded and now single barrel 327 that one fell out three twenty eight three nineteen and with both barrels two eleven so that's usable, but the gun is unsafe because obviously a single shot is going to yield higher velocity than is okay. 327, 325. Presumably safe for both barrel use, but ultimately unsafe for single, single barrel. So we see without the flow restrictor in, we're getting an average of 323 feet per second over the chronograph. That's a lot faster than the 224, but it's too fast. It's illegally fast and unsafely fast at pretty much any field. So what we need is something between the stock configuration with the flow limiter and the illegally high speed that we get without it. So the solution I found is to go ahead and port the flow restrictor here with a 3 16th inch drill bit. We're gonna drill out the uh, center hole here, start with a smaller bit and work your way up, and then drill out one of these three faces, because again, this thing is basically symmetrical around 60, around 120 degrees. So if we drill any one of these faces, that should allow us to create more uh, flow than the stock configuration, but not quite as much flow and not quite as much space and volume as we get with the chamber fully open. Okay, so here's what we end up with. I have put one 3 16th inch a hole at the front of the flow restrictor and one at what's called at the top. Again, this thing is more or less symmetrical around three sides. So it doesn't matter which way you put it in as long as it's gonna be facing to the uh, upper left or right and not downwards. And we'll see why in a second. So again, three different ways to orient this thing. We'll put this thing in up facing to the upper left. Put that flow restrictor back in. And then reseal the back of the dump chamber. And then once again, reassemble the gun and see what we get over the chrono. Okay, so fresh cartridge with the ports. Let's see, right barrel. 262, left barrel. Break, bad. Try again, right barrel, 264, left barrel, 247. That's definitely usable. A couple more, right barrel, 251, left barrel, 241. And both barrels, 136. Okay, so same day, same gun, they've moved the chrono over here. The uh, CO2 may be a bit warmer. The paint in my hopper here may be a bit warmer and maybe expanded as well. I want to show you what different time of day and hotter temperatures will do with a CO2 powered gun like this. So again, this is with the 
uh, port on the flow restrictor pointed upwards. Help somebody charge the gun. There we go. 274. 274. Definitely usable. Try to stick with these green guys. Two eighty nine, two fifty eight. So again, it's hotter now, so the velocity has gone up considerably. These are bigger paint balls. These purple ones, I think. Two ninety five, two eighty one. So let's stick with the green ones if I can. Two eighty five. 265. So that's with the single barrel operation with double barrel. 176. But that is still certainly usable in my book for double barrel stuff. So we got usable velocities and different kinds of temperatures when the port in the flow rule limiter was pointed upwards. But bet you're wondering what happens if we put it in the other way where the port that we put onto this flow limiter is pointed downwards at the bottom of the dump chamber where the gas is coming in. So let's try that now. Okay so this is a test with the port turned down toward the valve. So again first two shots. First shot 339. Second 343. So anything that may be higher than it was with the port open. 345, 303. So you can see we have different paint here. Not the fairest test. But turning the port downwards is not going to solve the velocity problem. This is both barrels. 241. Two sixty-three, both barrels. That's impressive. Again, single barrel use, 325, 322, 322. Okay, so that was a bit of a surprise to me too. So with the port angle downwards, we actually see a slightly higher temperature than we do with no flow limiter at all. I'm not entirely sure why that might be. Perhaps you're just creating a more efficient pathway for gas to come up from the bottom of the inlet here into the power tube area and then go through the gun. I'm not sure that also the temperature might have been higher. I don't know. But we definitely saw a much more efficient shot using the double barrels with that flow restrictor pointer downwards. So even though that's gonna to be too high to ever use with single barrel usage, what you might be able to do is to set up the gun with the flow limiter pointed downwards in such a way as to let you use it safely with both barrels. Okay, so let's say you want to set the gun up to shoot double barrel all the time with the flow restrictor facing downward to the dump chamber. What you want to make sure is that the selector switch has the barrels in the double barrel configuration, right, on the switcher. That's done by making sure it is, the little selector lever here, is set to where it is facing 90 degrees out from the bottom. And then just leave these parts out when you reassemble the gun. That way you can't accidentally switch the gun back into single barrel mode which would mean that a shot like that would be shooting well under 300, well over 300 feet per second. That's the configuration you want, and go ahead and proceed with reassembling the gun. Okay, so here's the gun reassembled with no selector switch. It is now double barreled only. So if it's gonna shoot 260-ish feet per second with both barrels, it would never be safe in single barrel, and you're not gonna get one because you can't change it anymore. So this is the configuration if you're gonna use the downward port you want it with no selector switch installed in the gun. So there we go. The usable solution to fixing the velocity on the HDS-68 is, is probably tied to this velocity adjuster. Not removing it altogether, but porting it in some way to allow just enough gas to get you to 278 feet per second. I would love to see someone 3D print replacement flow restrictors, perhaps with different size ports that people can try to use to tune it. And maybe it's possible to do something with this dump chamber to have a sealed velocity adjustment screw somehow. I'm not sure exactly where it would go. It can't come in the back here because when you reassemble the gun, 
that whole area is blocked off by the selector switch for the two barrels and anything else you do to this is going to involve have to be it's going to have to be gas sealed in some way to be able to work but hopefully someone can come up with a better solution in the meantime a 3 16 inch port on the back front and top of the flow limiter got me to 278.